Um, first and foremost, I've been asked if you can put your headphones on just to make sure that the sound's clear and all coming through nicely. So we've got a few more people coming through. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you and appreciate everyone for attending this session. I've got to be honest, when I decided to talk about B2B commerce, I didn't think that this was going to be one that was so well attended with so many B2C commerce platforms here. So um, that's, that's off to a good start. So what we're going to be discussing today is very much around the topic of how B2B companies can select the ideal e-commerce platform for their organization. So very much focused on a blueprint, if you like, of the things that, in my experience from speaking to prospects, from speaking to customers that we speak to, what do they consider to make the right choice for their organization? So before I get into the detail, very quickly, an introduction from myself. Um, that's me up on the screen there. My name is Dan Cox. Um, if I look slightly tired, I've had a baby seven weeks ago. Um, so I've been getting a lot of sleepless nights, so apologies for, for the bags. But I actually work for an organization called Santa Commerce. We're not the best known e-commerce platform in the world. This is gonna be an agnostic presentation today, I promise you, it's not focused on us. Uh, but just as a heads up, we're actually at D48. So if anyone wants to come and find out a little bit more about us after the session today and what it is that we do, come over, we can grab a coffee and we can tell you a little bit more about Sana. So I work across the UK and Ireland and more recently the US looking after our enterprise prospects. And really my job is to speak to, if I can use the term, the more unglamorous organizations. So your manufacturers, your wholesalers, your logistics companies that are still considering the idea of e-commerce. They're not quite sure whether their customers are gonna see the value and helping them to understand how that can really drive the customer experience that they provide in today's world, considering that we live in a very digital world. So very much looking forward to the session today. Now, before I go into the, the meat of the presentation, I, I am gonna hit you with some statistics. It wouldn't be a presentation without them, but just for anyone in the room today that does work for a manufacturer, a wholesaler, a logistics organization, that might still be thinking, well, what is the overall opportunity for our organization? How big is the B2B e-commerce market? And is it something that we should be considering for our organization to drive growth? I think the first statistic by Market Watch on the left-hand side really does paint that picture. So the global B2B e-commerce market was valued at 7.8 trillion in 2022. Now that sounds impressive, that's a big number. The most impressive thing for me is that that's five times the market value of the B2C e-commerce market. So there is huge potential for organizations in the B2B space through e-commerce. If we look at the UK in isolation, as you can see on the slide, the market value in the UK for the B2B e-commerce market in 2021 was 372 billion. So still, still very significant and it's projected to reach 2.3 trillion in its own right by 2030. So these are huge figures that we're thinking about and talking about here. And the next statistic brings me on to the reason why. So why are we seeing such huge growth within the B2B e-commerce market space? And it's fundamentally because the demographic of individuals that are in positions of buying power in manufacturers, wholesalers, logistics organizations are from a different generation. Right? We, we hear the buzz terms of Gen Z, we hear the buzzwords of millennials, but these individuals are now in positions of purchasing power and have known nothing else but technology, nothing else but an iPhone. When they're booking a holiday, when they're booking car insurance, when they're, booking, when they're buying a new pair of trainers, they do that through a device, right? And that information is 24 seven available on their phone, at their fingertips, and they don't necessarily want to speak to a human being if they want to purchase something. But those same individuals are going working for manufacturing companies and they find friction in their buying journey when they're buying from another B2B company. It's through an account manager, it's an email order that takes time to come back and be confirmed. They have to wait in a customer service queue. They don't necessarily speak to the person that they need to speak to there and then to place that order. And they've had this experience in the B2C world. So why should it be any different? And this Gartner statistic proves that. It shows us evidence of that, right? 83% of B2B buyers, when they have the option, now prefer to use e-commerce. As a result of that, the final statistic on the slide here, 
from a McKinsey report shows that nearly two thirds of B2B companies that they surveyed last year are offering e-commerce capability. And that's because of that demographic change. So, to come back to the presentation, if you are a B2B organization considering e-commerce for the first time or re-platforming from an existing e-commerce solution, and you might have got it wrong, it's not worked how you wished it would have worked, what are the things that the prospects that we speak to, the customers that we speak to, consider? And this can be viewed as a blueprint. Now, it's not going to be absolutely everything that you need to consider, but it's a pretty good starting point. So I'm going to go into eight topics. First and foremost, desired architecture. Connectability with existing tech stack. ERP integration. And if there's one thing that I mentioned about Sana today, forgive me, this will be it. But I think it's really important. Future-proof solution. B2B functionality. True B2B functionality that comes out of the box with a platform. Data analytics. Understanding total cost of ownership. And independent peer review getting feedback from end users. Vendors are gonna tell you a lot of things, but it's really important that you look into user feedback and comparisons of platforms, and I'll discuss that very shortly. So first and foremost is desired architecture. Now, for everyone in this room probably, or for most, these will not be new phrases, right? So it's not for me to go into detail about the differences between the three today. However, if you are considering e-commerce for the first time for your B2B business, and these are new, it's really important to understand the differences between the architecture of these e-commerce platforms that are out there on the market. And why do, I, why do I make that point? Well, with a lot of the companies that we, we deal with and that are customers of ours, they don't necessarily have the digital expertise internally within their organization to make the most of some of the architectures on here. And if we take Composable as an example, it gives you a best of breed approach. It allows you to plug and play different parts of an e-commerce solution like a CMS or a payments tool or a search tool into your overall offering. But are you at the stage internally yet where you have the expertise to make the most out of that approach? So there might be other vendors out there that can offer you a platform that comes with everything that you would expect from an e-commerce solution. And in the initial stages when launching a web store, you can lean on that expertise from a vendor. It's your choice, but it's really important that you understand the differences between these three and how that implicates on your business and your setup. Secondly is connectability with tech stack. Now, this is a constant conversation that I have with any enterprise business that I speak to. They had a lot of tech before e-commerce came along, and a lot of that technology is crucial to the overall offering that they provide to their customers at the end of the day. So if I can give you some examples from conversations that I've had, if we look at manufacturers, manufacturers will have an ERP system, and we can go into that in more detail later. But they'll have a product information management system, for example, that houses all of their products, their images, their descriptions, their videos. That all needs to find its, find its way in the hand of the customer on the web store. So it's really important that when you're vetting e-commerce vendors, you understand exactly what their approach is going to be to connect to all of this other technology that's in your IT landscape existing and how they actually integrate. What is the effort that's required? Do they have open APIs? And therefore, can you really start to push and pull that data that is important to you and to your customers? So vet all of the vendors on that particular point. Next is ERP integration. Now, I did say that I was going to mention a little bit about Sana here. And if I can expand on that, particularly within the B2B space, when we think about manufacturers and wholesalers, their ERP, in many cases in our experience, is the single source of truth. So if you were to list that data and think of their inventory, their pricing information, maybe their products are in there, all of their customer pricing, that changes, by the way, from B2B customer to B2B customer, very different to B2C. Delivery information, 3PL information, that can live and breathe inside of their ERP. So however you look at it, there is information that will need to come from your ERP to be in the hands of your customer to provide them with the best experience possible. So when you're speaking to vendors and you're considering e-commerce for your, for your business, it's really important to understand exactly how they plan to integrate. Is that gonna be a middleware approach which introduces another piece of technology 
into the overall IT landscape and e-commerce picture, or can they deliver a direct integration into your ERP so they can call that individual customer's price in, in real time. You can show that customer how much stock is available for those products in real time, rather than having a synchronized approach where that data is intermittently being updated in the front end, which can impact adoption. So ERP integration is crucial in conversation with any vendor that you speak to. How they deliver it is really important, and it has pricing and investment implications. Sorry. The next one seems really obvious, but it's so important in today's age with the amount of e-commerce vendors available that you review their roadmap, right? If you look at Sana, we have an open roadmap on our support site. It tells you exactly where we're going to focus our time. And the important point around that is, if you're reviewing five or six vendors, where do they really focus their investment? Where do they really see their product developing over the next five to 10 year period? Do they do a little bit of B2B, but really their bread and butter is B2C, and that's where they're taking their product? Or are you speaking to a vendor that fully focuses on B2B out of the box functionality, and you can start to align your requirements, right? You, you know your business, you understand your back end processes assess where they're taking that product, the features and the functionalities that are coming down the track in that review phase so you can future-proof yourself and the organization and ultimately your e-commerce solution and offering to your customers. B2B functionality. <clears throat> now it's very different from B2C functionality. Yes, all e-commerce platforms should have a search bar. You should be able to look for products. You should be able to check out. You should be able to pay using a payment method or a credit card. That's very textbook stuff. But for most manufacturers and logistics organizations, they have a lot of back-end processes and functionality requirements that are just fundamentally different to what you would maybe get out of the box from what we would call a B2C e-commerce vendor. And I'll give you a few examples of that. So a common one within B2B is multi-authorization for orders. So there will be a unit within these enterprise organizations that has a chain of command. Some of those individuals within purchasing can have a responsibility to actually put the order together. They're not necessarily the person that can press play on that order and process it. So that will then have to go to a senior person within the purchasing team to finally get checked through and finally pass through as an order. That isn't something necessarily that is considered by all the e-commerce platforms. And it's that sort of functionality that you should really be focusing on. If we think about B2B customers, most of those customers will have specifically negotiated pricing. They might have volume discounts on certain products. They might have a trade agreement in place. They might have sales agreements based on certain product categories. Is that being activated in real time or is that something that you then have to build into your e-commerce solution of choice, which is gonna to lead to development, it's gonna to lead to a higher investment, so the focus here really is assessing the strength of B2B functionality so that you can future-proof yourself and also you're taking into account your current business processes. That's super important. Next is data analytics. Whoever you're speaking to, it is fundamentally important to your success running a web store as a B2B organization, as any organization, is to understand can they connect to existing data analytics? Maybe it's Power BI, maybe you have other reporting tools internally. Can your web store track that data? If not, are you, are you speaking to a vendor that actually offers that capability out of the box? There's vendors out there that embed it into a CMS, it's embedded into their overall solution. But those businesses that I've spoken to that have got e-commerce wrong is because they've had great ideas and plans of how many current customer accounts they want to move online, how much revenue they want to push through their web store on an annual basis. They've not had data analytics to actually assess their performance at the point of go live. And that's where the hard work starts. Your web store doesn't run itself. And without having that information about new visitors to your store, which products are performing well, how much revenue is going through the store, accounts that have been created, new business accounts, all of that data is fundamental to help you understand where are we tracking against our KPIs? Do we have to pivot? And what do we need to do to get back on track? And that can't happen without data analytics. It's super, super important. Total cost of ownership. Uh, being completely transparent again, um, 
obviously, th this seems like quite an obvious slide, right? Of course, you're going to factor in the total cost of ownership. But what actually comes into play when considering that as a first time business in the B2B space and how does that look like? Well, there are plenty, there are lots of different pricing models out there in the market from an e-commerce perspective. Whether that's a flat fee, whether that's gross uh, monthly value, whether that's transaction, that pricing model needs to be factored into your total cost of ownership for a long term projection over a five to 10 year period. Are you working with an e-commerce vendor that implements their solution themselves? Now, the vast majority of e-commerce vendors will work with agencies. Many of them will be here today, and they will actually implement their platforms on behalf of the vendor. So then you have to factor in their day rates, right? How long is it gonna take you to get our web store live? What is the price point for that? What is your day rate? And being really clear and transparent about what that fee is. There are other providers out there that will handle the implementation themselves. So the services can be different based on the e-commerce vendors that you speak to. And the ongoing development really goes back to the point that I made about securing yourself from a B2B functionality perspective. Up front, you need to assess and understand exactly how much development is going to go into your web store for the point of go live based on any customizations that you need and that functionality that doesn't come out of the box. So safeguard yourself with a solution that offers you that capability from the get-go. And finally, middleware. We've already mentioned this. Somehow, some way, your web store is going to need to connect to your ERP system. The number one way of doing that within our world is connecting that through a third-party application, through a piece of middleware. How much is that middleware going to cost? Do you need to maintain that middleware? Does that need to be upgraded? Do you have the expertise internally to be able to manage that architectural setup from an e-commerce point of view? Or can you look for a real-time integration approach that removes middleware from the situation altogether? And finally, my last slide. I'm sure everyone will do this as part of their review. Look into the industry analysis that focus on this as their day job. We've just been through a, um, a long process with Gartner for their Magic Quadrant. We've also been a part of Forrester Wave previously. There are so many peer review websites out there now, like G2 and Captera, where you're getting the true feedback from end users of those solutions, and that should absolutely form a part of your analysis, your part of review in the early stages, to understand what end users have experienced and the strengths and weaknesses of the platforms that are a part of your review. That's it for me. That was quite short and sweet. Um, if anyone else has got any questions, you can come and see me afterwards, or alternatively, come and pay us a visit at D48, and we'd be more than happy to have a conversation and, and speak to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening.